Next thing you guys are going to do is you're going to make cups. I have a couple samples out here on the um, front, uh, which you are welcome to look at, touch, pass back so that other people can see them. Um, but these are prior student samples, um, so you can kind of see what's going on with them. Um, and I want to point out with them a couple of things because these are going to be your requirements for the assignment. All right, so uh, number one requirement, and these are all listed at the top for you, so you don't have to type anything, but you're going to make two cups, okay? So two cups, and both of those cups have to have handles. So I'm going to show you guys how to make handles today. Um, you are going to not want to use any words or symbols, which we'll talk about a little bit later and what that means on the demos. So no words, no symbols on the cups. And number three, they're going to be made from soft slabs, which I'm going to show you how to do today. So the first project we made with coils, this is a new building technique, this is soft slabs. And then four, they need to be between three and six inches tall, okay? So those are the basic requirements for this assignment. This is a two-week assignment, so we're starting it today. Our last day on this assignment in class is going to be September 17th, which is a Friday. So that is the plan right now, September 17th. And let's get started making them. So again, I'm going to need a chunk of clay that is like a really big snowball, maybe, maybe, maybe like a, um, an orange size lump of clay. I got a little bit too much here. So if you guys have clay left from your last project and it's still good, you can use that. We're going to get some new clay for this one too. So you can always save the other stuff and recycle it or reclaim it when you need to if it's kind of dried out. But I'm going to take some, don't I sound like Maria Martinez? Okay, she's got like rhythm when she does her paddling. Okay, so I'm going to take the time to like smooth this lump of clay out. And the reason for that is, is because if I don't do that, when I go to roll it, Anything that's rough on the edge is going to get split apart as I go to roll it and stretch the clay. So I do take a, a second to just kind of smooth this ball of clay out. And then I'm going to pound it to like a hamburger patty with the palm of my hand. Not, the, not like this. This will take you 20 years. You'll get nowhere. I'm going to use the meaty part of your hand to make that into like hamburger, right? Thick. It's still like an inch and a half maybe two inches thick, but it's got a flat top and a bottom, okay? Now, this is very similar to what we did with the coil pot because we started with a soft slab. The difference with this is, is that we need this slab to be a specific shape because we're gonna roll it up so that it becomes a cylinder. So we need this to be a very long rectangle. So when we were rolling for the coil pot, we were going for a circle, but now I'm trying to get some length out of it. So as I begin the rolling with this, I'm going to think about that and pay attention to the direction that I'm rolling so I get some length out of it. So I'm going to be rolling forwards and backwards with this. If you can see this, sometimes you get, and I, I didn't wedge this piece maybe well enough, but this is like, if you start seeing something that looks like a little blister on the surface, if you guys can see that, that's an air pocket. You want to pop that. So if you get an air pocket, take your pen tool, just stab it a couple times. Take your aggressions out on it, smooth that over, and now the air pocket's gone, okay? So as you see air pockets arise, pop them. Okay, so um, as I'm rolling this, there's a couple of things to remind you of. We talked about this with the coil pot, and I think I'm kind of skipping down to number four on your handout there when I talk about rolling a good slab. There's a couple things you want to keep in mind. I want this to be a nice, even consistency for one. So as I'm rolling it, the first thing I want to keep in mind is that if I don't want to use the guide sticks as I lift up on the end, I want to, or I should say, I want to lift up on the end. If that's troublesome for me and I can't do it, don't forget you can use the guide sticks. So for one of those, rolling a good slab, either use the guide sticks or lift up at the end. So if you use the guide sticks, you know, your rolling pin can rest on them. And then it doesn't matter what you do because it won't be able to go down lower than the guide sticks. Now, I am not a fan of guide sticks, but personal preference, they're there for you if you like them. I just roll it straight. The other thing I want to point out 
is I, I have two surfaces that I'm working on here. I've got the canvas and I've got the, the um, craft foam. Doesn't matter which one. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. If you want to use canvas, it, if your clay is really wet, it's going to suck moisture out of it quicker. So sometimes it's helpful, especially like when you're cut wedging. Canvas is the best thing to use. But it also has a texture to it. So sometimes the craft foam is nice because it's smoother and you don't get that texture. So depending on what you're doing, you can choose which mat that you want to work with. I'm using the craft foam today because my clay is the perfect consistency and I'm not worried about it drying out and I want it to be smooth. Okay, so the first thing, rolling a good slab, lift up at the end and use the guide sticks. The second thing is, can you see how this craft foam is starting to buckle and lift up? And the reason that is is because as I roll the clay, the, the, the mat or whatever I'm using stretches with it, and it can only stretch so far. So you might get to a point where you're rolling, 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 and it's not stretching anymore. And especially if it's starting to lift up, you have to release the clay from it and then lay it back down. So I usually flip it over. So the two best tips for rolling a slab are one, use the guide sticks or lift up at the end, and two, flip the clay over often. So you'll see when I'm rolling slabs that I do a couple of rolls and then this starts to flip up and then I pick it up and I flip it over and I roll some more and then it stretches. Now if the slab starts getting really big or it's stuck to the mat, then you can just pick the whole mat up and just kind of peel it back and that'll help you get that off of there. All right, now I need this to be a rectangle at some point, and right now it's an oval. So I've rolled it long enough, and I'm, what I'm really trying to do is get the length so it can go all the way around this tube. So once it's long enough, then I start need to, needing to look about making these a little bit more squared off. So now I am gonna roll just a little bit up like that. Flip it over and I'll do it on the other side too just to get some height because remember we want these to be between three and six inches there's a little pocket there's a little pocket so I need this to be have a little height to it as well the ideal thickness for your slab is a quarter of an inch thick so I'm just about there I'm just about where I want to be One more quick roll, and I think I'm good. So yeah, I'm at about a quarter of an inch thick. So that's what I want. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna wanna do is like I said, I'm gonna roll it up on one of these tubes. So you have to have your know which tube you want. Um, and there's several, the, the, these tubes are located just two shelves above the rolling pins, and there's different kinds. There's different thicknesses to them. This is sort of like a standard thickness, but there's some that are really wide, like there's some cardboard ones that are really wide. So it kind of depends what you want your mug to be used for. So like this one here is a really nice example of a, of a mug that's kind of like a soup bowl, right? So if you want it to be more towards three inches high, you might want more width, right? Because if it's three inches high, and really short, then you're drinking espresso and not much else, right? So this might be one of the wider ones, and this might be one of the narrower ones, right? So it depends how wide, what diameter you want, and which tube you pick out. So this is the tube I picked out today, and lots of them are this black plastic. One thing to be aware of is that a lot of these black plastic have this white uh, cap on the end that does not come off. I don't want to use that side to roll it because it'll leave this weird mark on the bottom. I'm going to use the side without it. And that's going to be what I'm going to roll this up on. Okay. Now, this is also plastic, which means clay is going to stick to it really easily. And so I need to put something on here so the clay doesn't stick. I need a release agent. So I am going to use a paper towel as a release agent. So let me move this to the side and show you how I get the paper towel on there. Just grab a paper towel from the sink. 
and you are going to leave a little bit of space right here from the end of the paper towel. And then I want to kind of wrap it up tightly. Roll this up like this. Trying to keep it tight on the form. And then I'm going to just use the littlest, littlest piece of masking tape. To hold that in place. So now, like I said, this is a this is a, a release agent. So you've got to be careful where you place the masking tape. Uh, notes are on Schoology. Um, in unit two, I think soft slab unit. I think it's two, maybe three. Is it two? Yeah, unit two. He's saying yes. William is saying yes. Okay. All right, here we go. So this is a release agent, which means. I need to be able to move this paper towel around. So I have to be careful that I tape the paper towel to the paper towel and that I don't tape the paper towel to the tube. Okay, so I'm taping it there, not here. Now I can kind of slide this around and I can get the clay off. You'll see that how I do that in a second. Okay, all right, now I'm ready to make my rectangle. So I need a ruler. Those are also on the back shelf. And I'm going to start not by measuring, but I'm going to just start by making a straight line with my ruler. So I'm gonna set this down here and just kind of cut this end off so that I get a straight line to start with. Now I never cut these, throw these scraps away because I can make a handle out of this later, so I'm just gonna save it. I might not use it, but I might. So I'll wrap that back in plastic, keep it nice and wet, and see if I can use it later. Now I have a straight edge here, and I can decide from that straight edge how tall I want, I'll flip it this way so I can do it the right way how tall I want my mug to be. So if I'm trying to make a short one that's wider, then maybe I only want three inches in height. Maybe I'm making a taller one, so I want five inches. I said six is the max. Usually people stick somewhere around four or five, right? So I'm gonna go with four for this one. So I'll make a mark at four. Then, I'm gonna move this out of the way. I will move my ruler over set it down again, and I always make a second mark at four. And the reason I make two marks is because that way I can be sure that I get my second side of the cup straight. It needs to be completely parallel. If I only make one mark, I can still get it really, really crooked. So I wanna make two marks so that when I go to line those two up, that I know that I get the top and the bottom of the cup straight. Didn't cut deep enough. There we go. Put that to the side. So this will be the top and the bottom of my mug. Now, you can leave these edges rounded. Um, I personally prefer just cutting one for my starting point, and then I leave this one round. I see students cutting both and starting to cut it too small, and then it doesn't fit around the two. So I caution you to not cut much off. So if I do this, I'm just gonna go right to the, I like to do it on this side, right to the edge of where that curve starts. Doesn't matter if I get this one perfectly straight either, it's just a little bit of a starting point, but I'm gonna leave this one alone. All right, now I'm gonna get, oh, I forgot one thing with this. With this loose end here, I just tuck it in, like that, okay? Now I'm gonna get my paper towel, and I can use this if I want, or I can just pick it up with my fingers. And I'm gonna kind of get that started. And roll it around the tube. So this is gonna be, this is kind of hard to show this, but let's see if I can. All right, so now I've got a double thickness here. Right, so this is gonna be really similar to what I showed you with that coil pot when you got that long coil and you cut through both. It's the same thing, just a little bit different. And this one's a little bit tricky to do. It looks like it's not, but then you do it and you realize it's, it's kind of tricky. So I'm gonna give you some tips. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut through both of these at the same time, and then it'll be the perfect fit. But this time, instead of just cutting both, I'm gonna cut so that my pin tool isn't directly 
par um, perpendicular to the tube. I'm gonna cut it so that it's like this on a 45 degree angle. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I, if I cut it like this, I'm gonna get a bevel cut, which is gonna be a stronger joint, okay? So the reason that this is tricky is because I'm gonna try to hold my tool at an angle, but I'm gonna draw the line straight. And I see students all the time starting to straighten out their tool and then cut diagonally. It's kind of, I don't know what it is, but it kind of feels like when you're like rubbing your belly and patting your head at the same time, it's just kind of like too many things to think about. So here's my tip for you. What I would do is I would draw the line on there so that you don't have to think about where straight is. Just lightly draw it. Then I can line my tool up with that mark and I can focus on keeping my tool straight and just kind of, or keeping my tool at an angle and just follow that line. Okay, now I'm gonna remove this part. Gently, 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 and supporting with my hand the whole time, lift this up. Carefully take away this excess clay here. And then I can tuck this back underneath and I get that bevel cut a little bit stronger, okay? Now, I do not need to loop, or I'm sorry, do not need to score and slip. Some people do for extra insurance, but I do not need to score and slip that joint because this is plastic and this is plastic. So this is just, I'm just gonna loot this. So I give it a little initial loot, and then another tool I really like to use is this flexible serrated rib. I have to be careful not to damage the lip when I'm doing this, so I'm conscientious of what I'm, where I'm doing this, so I don't mess this up. So I give it a little loot like that, and I give it a little extra connection, and then I can flip the serrated rib over. I can smooth that out. Now, I think you guys will start to figure out that when you watch me do a demonstration, you're like, oh, that's easy, right? And then you go to do it and it doesn't come out quite as easily as it, as it looked, right? Well, that's because I've been doing this for 20 plus years and you guys have maybe not even doing it, been doing it for 20 plus days, right? So a lot of times when you are rolling this clay up, if you've taken too long to roll the slab and, and you probably experienced this with your coils, they start to crack, right? So if you are getting cracking and you're getting frustrated because this keeps cracking as you roll it up on the tube, here's a little tip for you. Before, if this, if this were my slab that I was gonna roll up on the tube and I'm like, keep getting cracking, but the clay feels wet enough, I'm gonna condition the slab a little bit first. So one thing I can do to prevent cracking is I can take my, the same rib, just the smooth side, and I can go over it like this. Now what this does is it compresses the clay and it makes the molecules tighter together. I'll do it to the back side. It tightens up the molecules and it is gonna be more flexible and less likely to crack. So a lot of potters, professional as well, condition their slabs before they start bending them because it helps with the fluidity of it. Okay, so there's a little tip for you if you're getting frustrated with cracking. All right, now, we're gonna put the bottom of the cup on, but let's just say you get to the end of the day and um, you're not finished and you've gotta put it away. And, you know, you're not staying after or whatever, right? So um, number seven says, how should you store your pieces overnight? Well, couple tips with this. First of all, if you're at this stage, you gotta take the tube out. So I'm gonna take the tube out, but I'm gonna keep the paper towel in like this. So take the tube out, leave the paper towel in. That's the first tip. The reason for that, there's a couple reasons, but the most important reason for you to know is that clay shrinks as it dries. And first of all, this probably won't fit in your locker, but even if it did, if your cup begins to dry, it will begin to shrink around the tube and the tube doesn't shrink. So you can either get a crack in your cup or it could become very difficult for you to take the cup off at all because it's hugging onto the tube so tight. 
Okay? So that's the most important reason. The other reason is because we're sharing the tubes, so you can't hog them in your locker, right? You know, other people need them. So what I am leaving in there is the release agent. So when I come back the next day, I can find the tube, and I can slip it inside the towel, kind of gently tap it down, and I'm ready to go again, okay? So tube out, paper towel in. The second tip is wrap each cup in its own bag. And this goes for the duration of the project. This is very specific to one stage. But I see students trying to put both cups in one bag, which just traps air and it makes them dry out quicker. We got lots of bags. Each cup gets its own bag. Wrap them tight, OK? All right, did I miss any of the things on the uh, front side of the worksheet that you guys want me to go back over? Anybody miss one? No? Which one? The first one is due. Our last day in class on this is September 17th. Anybody else? Yeah. Say it again. The tubes are two shelves above the rolling pins in the back of the room. Who else is, needs one? Okay. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the bottom. And sometimes I have a slab that's left over that's big enough for me to use, but I don't this time. So I'm just going to roll another one. So I'll take this piece of clay. Little hamburger patty. Get this out of my way so I don't destroy it. This also is going to be a quarter of an inch thick. This time I'm not worried about the shape as much. Okay. And now. I got a quarter inch slab. I'm going to take this cup with the tube in it and I'm going to set it on there. And I'm just going to trace around the edge right up next to it. And that's where I'm going to cut. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, save this piece. Never know. Okay, so now I've got the slab that is going to be the base, but I have to get it attached. This is probably where the place where most cups die. This is this is hard. It's it's because and the reason that what I'm going to show you is hard is because you can't be distracted. Like you have to pay attention to what you're doing. If you recall, the, open, the other side of this tube was open, which if you push down on this tube at all, it acts like a cookie cutter and you push right through to the bottom and you have to make a new one. So I am very conscientious of the fact that I am not adding any weight. I won't even rest my hand on the top of this. It's just the weight of my arm will cut through the soft clay. So I'm very careful with the way I hold it when I do this, okay? So that's one thing. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some baby circles, little baby circles. Baby's growing up, the baby's a toddler now. Oh, it's going to high school, teenage circles. I got grown up circles and grandpa circles, and oh my god, grandpa fell down. And grandpa's on the ground. All right, so as I did that, it stretched the clay up over the lip. And again, I'm not going to push on this because it'll stretch out the lip. I'm going to let the weight of the clay do the work. And just kind of blend that up into. The bottom of the cup okay no scoring or slipping necessary if i get a little line there and i want it to go away i can use the rib tool but it's pretty well joined at that point okay now i'm ready to take the tube out take the paper towel out and i have the base for my cup now you're going to want to get in there and kind of loot the interior seam as well 
and maybe the top here. If you can't reach all the way down to the bottom, you can use your wood tool to get that interior seam blended. And then I have to set it aside and let it get to leather hard. I don't want to do any more with it because it's super soft and squishy and I can misshape it quite easily. The only thing that I you really could do here is that this lip is a little bit sharp. So if you wanted to smooth out the lip, you can use a little bit of water, just a little. And you can make this a little smoother so that when you go to drink out of it, you don't get a bloody lip, right? It's hard to imagine that when you're working with clay because it's so soft that it's ever going to get hard. But it gets hard and it gets sharp. So you got to pay attention to those little edges. All right, now I'm going to set this aside. And Oh, no, that was my one. This one, this one. Okay, so this one I made yesterday. So it's stiffer. It's not super stiff. You can see I'm moving it a little bit. But it's. I would say this is like a soft leather heart. And that is the stage that I'm going to do all of my decorating, and that's the stage that I'm going to add my handles. So we're going to do handles next. We're going to talk about handles. But understand that you have to quit when it's like this. So you put that cup to the side, you let it dry out, you monitor it drying, and then you start making your second cup. And hopefully by the time you're done making the second cup, you can go back to the first one and you can finish that one, okay? So um, handles. Let's talk handles. I'm going to break this one off of here. You got a homework assignment tonight. You ready for it? This is a hard one. Let's talk handles and then I'll tell you your homework. All right, let's say, all right, this looks like a good handle. Let's use this piece. Yeah, that looks like a great handle. All right, how's this? Is that good? You're laughing at my handle. What's wrong with this handle? It's obnoxious. How is it obnoxious? Way too big. I could stick my entire arm through here and do a bicep curl to drink, right? So way too big. All right, let me fix it. Let me, let me fix it. I don't want to be obnoxious. Hang on. I got it. Here we go. How's that one? Perfect. <laughs> okay. So I exaggerate for a purpose, which is you guys get a general sense of how big a handle is should be because you've all used one. But potters pay really, really careful attention to these details because this object is functional. You guys, I want you to take these mugs home. I want you to drink out of them. And you're not going to drink out of them if you're going to get a bloody lip or the handle isn't comfortable. So here's your homework assignment. Tonight, I want you to go home. I want you to open your cabinet in your kitchen. And I want you to find your favorite mug. Do you guys have a good mug? You know, like when you make a drink, it's always that same mug. You're like, where's my mug? Right? All right. I want you to drink out of that mug tonight. That is your homework assignment. I don't care if you drink water, make hot chocolate, coffee, whatever. But I want you to drink out of that mug tonight. And what I want you to do is I want you to pay attention to the handle and the lip. With the handle, I want you to decide how many fingers do you like to drink with. Are you a one-finger drinker? Are you a two-finger drinker? Three, four, or do you just slide your fingers through and do something like this? How do you hold the cup? How big does that handle need to be? Ideally, you want to be able to slide your fingers, which is my favorite handle here. I don't know, this one maybe. Ideally, I want to be able to slide the number of fingers through that I like, and I need to be able to get my knuckles close to the side of the cup without touching. If my knuckles touch, we call that a knuckle burner because you're going to burn your knuckles on your coffee. So you want it close so you control the pour. If your knuckles are too far away, you lose control over the pour and it ends up on your shirt when you're drinking, right? So I want you, that's your homework assignment. You're going to drink something and you're going to pay attention to how, that hand, how big that handle is because that's your answer. That's how many fingers you drink from. And then also just think about the lip. Look at how thick it is. How, like where the curves are and things like that and kind of think about how that's going to feel when it hits your lip. I heard a potter say that drinking out of their mug is kind of like kissing someone because like you know like you're putting it to your lips right so like it's like it's important right got to get that lip on that cup right. So here we go here's my leather handle one I'm going to show you two ways to make a handle this one and this one okay. 
I do not have a requirement on how you make the handle. My requirement is simply that you have a handle. I'm going to show you two ways. If you have a different way, that's fine. Okay? So these are both made out of slabs. So let's start with this one here. I'm just going to take this piece that I saved. I don't like to call it lazy. I like to call it efficient with my time. I already made the thing. I might as well use it, right? So I saved this, and I'm going to cut this into a rectangle. And then me personally, I like it to be thicker on the top and thinner at the bottom. So I'm going to taper the bottom. That's a personal preference. That's what I pay attention to when I'm drinking. Out of, I drink out of other people's cups. I collect cups. I'm going to tell you about that tomorrow a little bit when we do our brainstorming. But it's very helpful to me to drink out of other people's cups because I learn what they do. And then I try to, to do the same things. So now I'm going to take just a little bit of water, just a little. And I'm going to soften the edges, and I'm going to kind of compress that clay. A little more. Same thing. Soften the corners so it doesn't cut my fingers when I drink out of it. Stretch the clay. Then I'm going to bend it. That becomes this handle. Now, when I bend it, I'm going to bend it into a very strong C shape because eventually I'm going to cut this part off and so I need that to bend all the way around so an extra strong bend on that then I'm going to let it set it aside and let it get to leather hard now the perfect stage of leather hard for this is that I can pick it up with it out it being all floppy right but I need just a tiny tiny bit of flexibility so I can press it in and make it stick to the cup without breaking so let's put this well, let me show you to make the other one first. The other one's like this. So let's say you want to make a different kind of handle, like a square handle or something. If you take the slab and instead of bending it, I could do something like this. This is like for a more geometric handle. Whoa. Right? So then I could smooth out these edges a little bit and have something like square or triangular or something different. This one I made round, I just made it flat so it's thinner this way. Me, I like these handles, but again, depends the design that you choose. All right, so now I'm going to attach this cup here, So I'm going to or this handle to this cup. I want to show you how it all gets attached. So I'm going to look at the placement of where I want it to go. I don't like that little tail. Like I said, I'm going to cut it a little straighter. I think I'm going to use my, you can use the pen tool. I'm going to use this. I'm just going to give it a straight edge here so that it attaches nicely to the side. And then I don't want that little tail. So I'm going to cut this part off. I'm going to set it down on the cup where I want it. And then I'm going to trace around roughly where it goes. Those are my marks. And now I know that's where I got to score and slip. Now this time when I'm scoring and slipping, I have to score and slip this and this. I didn't cut that very straight. I could have done better. Oh, wow, rough. Hmm. It's hard. Put that again. A little better. I have to score and slip both sides because both sides are leather hard. Right? So I score and slip this, I score and slip this, and then I'm going to add a little water. And you guys are going to learn a very important, important method today for joining, and it is called the Scoochie Scoochie. Now, some people in this room know how to do this already. I won't name any names. But if they want to help me out, you know who you are, you can help me out. Okay, so I got it wet, but if I smooth it out when I get it wet, I might just go scratch it up again. Okay, so I'm going to set that on there gently like that. And then I'm going to give a little bit of pressure and wiggle it back and forth so that the slip squishes out because you can see it's not very well joined there. And as I do this, it's very important that I say, 
scoochy, scoochy, scoochy. But I have to say it in a very high pitch. Okay, like the higher pitch, the better. Okay, so I'll show you once and then you can all help me out. Okay, ready? Here we go. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to hold it right here. I'm going to wiggle it back and forth and I'm going to go scoochy, 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 scoochy. I think I could do higher. What do you guys think? I, wasn't, I could do higher pitch. You guys can too. Are you ready? On the count of three, let's get the bottom attached. Ready? One, two, three. Good. Oh, decent. Okay. You got to pass it. Okay. So what you guys will see is that this lip squished out of the sides there. And I can just kind of, that is a crooked handle. You guys can do better than that. i wipe that extra slip away. And then I get that perfect join there. I, I need to scooch it. That was because I didn't get the high pitch. No, it's because I cut it crooked. There we go. Okay, so now this is like wet glue. So I don't want to handle it. I don't want to handle the handle until it's been fired. But if you leave it alone, let it dry, get it fired, that's going to be a good handle. It's going to hold in place there. Okay, so um, what else did I wanted to say? Oh, I missed one thing that I wanted to say, which was the reason that you want the flexibility there is because if you attach the handle and it doesn't quite touch the side, I need to be able to. Stop for one second. I promise I'll give you time to pack up. Just listen. Just listen. Do you see how it's not touching? I don't know. Can you see? Get out of my way, Hannah. Can you see? I need to be able to push it to get it to attach. So I need that tiny bit of flexibility for that reason. Okay? Now, tomorrow, we are going to talk about doing the design work, and then you guys are going to be doing brainstorming for your own mugs tomorrow. So don't forget to do your homework. Thank <laughs> you.